something that I added last night after talking to Catherine about robots having emotions being bad and then taking over the world. But they, they can also, robots and computers having emotions can be a good thing too. There's this uh, customer service uh, principle called pace and lead. Uh, basically, this is about matching the intensity of the customer. Um, so if a customer is really angry and irate, um, sometimes it's really hard to get them to a point where you can then get them to, to rationalize with you and kind of reach a solution. So sometimes you just want to be just as irate as them and then slowly lead them to a lower level of intensity. So we have a nice little example here of like what this would be like in a computer case of an application crash, so how the computer should react to this. It should basically swear about the program failing, um, saying it can't believe that, uh, and then it'll go down a level and say it'll try to fix that right away, um, saying it's really ridiculous that it crashed, because you know, that's not right, that's not. And then it's like, well, it's having the program diagnosed, the developers will be notified about this, and once again, reiterating that this behavior is unacceptable. But this is the lower level. There's no exclamation points. There's no swears. Uh, and then going, taking the uh, user down to another level, the program it lets the uh, user know that the program is now restarting. It has been severely reprimanded, probably flogged. But <laughs> you can't really flog a program, so it's OK. We can say that. Um, and then it's then finally taking the user down to like the level of acceptance or level of um, Basically, uh, forgiving the application for crashing, you know, it's restored the application, um, restored the autosave um, if possible, and it apologizes for the inconvenience. So basically, the typical, typical level of customer service calls at that point. So it's a nice low level. So I, I thought that was a nice little example. But if anybody else has any examples they want to share, or what their thought, maybe this is a really bad idea, but yeah. I'm just curious, is there something like this at the uh, airport, like a ticket counting or something? <laughs> I, I heard <laughs> great, great arguments, and I, I think it, I, I'm curious if somebody makes like, like oh, this. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, this is, um, this is a growing practice in customer service uh, where they're trying to match the intensity of the customers. Um, there's some people who don't like it and who say it's really not good because um, you're then has the potential of making the customer stay irate or um, giving the giving the company a bad image for people who are just observing. Um, but it's been there's enough out there that shows that it makes people who are actually experienced the irate state calm down and go to this like lower state. So it is debatable. But if you saw this uh, with your computer, like with an application crash, would this make you feel better about it, or would it make you feel where is her? How do you feel? Any thoughts? Yeah. See, the thing that I don't necessarily buy on this is that it seems like it's the easy path to empathy, um, which I understand the intent behind it is to empathize with your customer and not go into solution mode and let them, it's basically a validation of their anger or wherever they're at. Yeah. So in that essence, it's good. However, if someone is really irate to match, I guess what I take from this is you're actually matching their intensity, meaning yeah your emotional state or your emotional level or your, right. you know, the pitch of your voice or, you know, whatever it is. But I don't know that that necessarily will bring them down. I mean, I, I do, I believe that there are better ways to empathize with someone and not match their intensity necessarily, yeah. but to still be present with wherever they're at and validate what they're thinking. Yeah, and that's one of the arguments for the people who don't like it within customer service. Um, but at the same time, a lot of the times when you have someone who's really angry, it's, they'll feel that you're not empathetic if, you're just like trying to calm them down. Um, I guess that's what I meant. I mean, it's an yeah. easy way for someone who maybe is not naturally empathetic to empathize. <laughs> so, you know, just to tell, it's, it's basically kind of what we're talking about with emotions and computers. It's like you're breaking down all these little tiny pieces of emotion and trying to mimic that emotion when that nece doesn't necessarily capture what that emotion is. If that makes sense. Yeah. And Mikey said that he agrees with you, so, or she agrees with you, sorry. Um, and Sujo is saying, not present there, don't have to be, she may, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, are there any more thoughts about that? Like, go, yes. You know, I, empathy is, is kind of fine, but I think when you have a problem like this, it's more about the result that you're going to get. So if they're unhappy with the result, they're still going to be pissed off, you know? That's true. That's a good point. I'd like to add to that. Um, right now, I've got 
uh, a $1,000 piece of software that's running like crap. And just before I got to this class, I was on uh, with tech support. And I realize now that you pointed it out that I, I was led. But uh, the tech was much more aggressive than I was. And now that I think about it, I'm still pissed off about the software. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, at least I got a frank and earnest answer. Yeah. Just in the overall good experience. I don't know if it was intentional on his part. If Philip's just been having a bad day. <laughs> Any more thoughts on this? Um, like, would would you be okay with a computer kind of matching your intensity of anger, or no? So my kind of thoughts with this is, why not just jump to the end? Like, do you really want to sit around for your computer to emphasize with you? You know. Wouldn't you just rather that it got to the point and just hand you back what you were working on? I think it really depends on personal preference. I mean, for instance, um, some of the readings said that they felt like it would be patronizing if the if the computer mirrored the emotion in an inappropriate way. And and from that context, I would say yes. But if it's in the context of a you know computer service representative or even a computer system that's helping you, if I'm mad personally, I want them to understand that I'm mad, and then we'll go into problem solving. And I don't know if it's a and maybe it's a male-female thing. Maybe it's a young, you know, thinker versus feeler kind of thing. I don't know, but I mean, it's. I think it's all personal. I think part of it is also like, uh, if it's a human being, we we get the idea that they can empathize. Right. But if it's a computer, we we don't really associate them as as having the emotional intelligence. So instead, we feel like we're being manipulated, uh, rather than than being helped. Dave was ask, actually ask, wondering if it's actually ethical for pace and leading. Like, is it ethical to like kind of pretend you have these emotions that you don't, and then, yeah, Andrea, you think? I mean, this is this is based, I think, completely on your personal value system. Like, for instance, my mom is someone who is completely altruistic in everything she does. So, if you're not mirroring her emotion in a completely authentic way, then it's it's manipulative. However, like my dad, for instance, he's all about, you know, how do you get people to do what you need them to do and have an effective conversation? And in that instance, you know, I mean, it's, it's, for mut it's mutually beneficial that I even am pretending to empathize with you because in the end result, we're going to get the problem solved. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and then Bill was pointing out online that, uh, some t that in terms of conflict resolution, a lot of the times it's bad to match aggression with aggression, um, which is a Good point, and one that I haven't seen in the discussion of peace and lead. Um, that issue of yeah, the escalation factor. Although here they're trying, to, they match and then they try and lower it, which I don't know if that helps at all. Um, helps get away from the aggression with aggression and escalation. It's a different kind of aggression, though. I mean, you're yeah. aggressively taking their side. It's not keeping your side and butting heads. It's it's aggressively going with them, so you're. It's kind of like almost in martial arts when you're catching a strike and then taking it even farther and redirecting it so that you can direct it where you want it to go. It's not like. It's not actually conflict. You're just you're just rolling with them. I like the martial arts analogy. That's good. Uh, and then Mikey also said she would laugh if this happened if it was cursing at itself. So maybe that's a good thing too. Laughter always helps uh, curb aggression. Yeah. Thanks for having that discussion. I thought it was a nice little addition. And thanks, Catherine, for leading me to look up these references again.